It was on a Tuesday, the 22nd of August, 1978, when the country received the news of the demise of the founding father of the nation, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. The night the president died, three individuals were at the epicenter of the breaking news between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. and made sure his demise remained a top secret until early afternoon later that day. They were Dr. Eric Mungola, Kenyatta's personal doctor, the Coast Provincial Commissioner Eliud Mahihu, and Police Inspector Simon Mwangi Wambogu. It is this trio linking the State House in Mombasa and the police headquarters at Vigilance House that quietly coordinated the chain of events under the cover of darkness, such that by the time the rest of the country awoke, the three had pieced together a complete plan of action following the death of the head of state. It is said Kenyatta's death was confirmed by Dr. Eric Mungola at about 2.30 a.m. He then immediately informed then Coast Provincial Commissioner Eliud Mahihu, who called the police headquarters at Vigilance House. A call that threw the then police inspector Simon Mwangi Wambugu on a hot seat. You know, before I received a call from Mombasa, the night was like any other night. And as you can see, it was very close to the morning because it was uh, around 3 o'clock. And uh, the first thing uh, that he told me is just to summon, uh, he started with, uh, with GK Karethi. Uh, Commissioner of Police, Bernard Inga, and uh, Kanyotu. Uh, a few minutes later, while I was trying to arrange that, because to me, maybe the police headquarters, that transport to take people at night was to come from police airway. And a few things had to happen because we had to make sure that the closed Wilson Airport operates to release the planes at night. And the controller from JKI. And that I did. And before I finished that process, I got another call that I should include uh, Udi Gichaga and his wife in this. Then I started getting other, other calls uh, once the planes were airborne. And you can see there are many people to be called because you have to call the GT pilot. When you get the second call and you think one plane may not be enough, you have to call the standby pilot. And while this was underway now, you get bombardment of many other calls giving you different instructions. Uh, then I, the other people I naturally have to inform, I have to call uh, my director of operations to put him in, in the picture. There were other people who also needed to be informed. One of them was State Officer B1 who had to go to the operations room that night to ensure smooth operations. After several calls and after uh, summoning all the pilots to fly to Mombasa. We were almost sure that something was wrong, but nobody wanted to say Kenyatta is dead because we didn't know how <laughs> Kenya looks <laughs> without Kenyatta. And uh, we managed it uh, until about uh, 6 o'clock. Initially, the cabinet meeting was supposed to take place at 9. Then it was shifted to 11. When we just thought we were done with the convention of the cabinet meeting, is uh, when I reported that I could raise all my tip tip and uh, moi, I was told no. I was reporting to Karethi, but when I finished reporting to him, I received a call from the Attorney General, and he told me I have to get moi. And now the hard part had started. Why did it have to be Wambugu running the show and not other senior officers? Duty of sub police headquarters is the Dove Center, particularly at night when the rest of the country is asleep. So it was not something unusual for them to call. In fact, 
he is the man who is awake when all of you are asleep because I'm the one who can wake up the top brass of security at the provincial level. And the state house is considered an institution like any other province. Now, when he called me, he did not announce to me that the president is dead. And what he said, the first thing he wanted is, is for me to tell Karidi to call him, which I did. Next, he wanted Inga to call him, which I did. Next, he wanted uh, Kanyoto to call him, which I did. It's after they communicated that they, they were coming back to me that they would like to be in Mombasa at a specific time. Departure in the next 30 minutes, 20 minutes, which was a hassle because now the duty pilot of that time was living in a Kariako estate. And you can imagine he has to travel all the way to Wilson Airport. Those days at that time, there would not have been any traffic. When we got instructions that Uri Kichaga and his wife would be required, then it was obvious for me that the plane would not be enough because this was Cessna 208. So we needed a second plane. And then we got the, uh, the standby pilot. But as he continued receiving and relaying instructions to specific individuals, there was a major challenge at the Wilson Airport. There was not even a single air controller on duty that night, and also the runway did not have the navigation lights to guide pilots for takeoff. The other thing we did is to make sure that police line up the runway with motor vehicles on both sides of the runway. And the pilots take their, their they, they com communicate with the air traffic controller and JKA because the air traffic controllers at Wilson were not on duty at that time. So things happened very nicely for me because despite all the logistical difficulties, we were able to achieve the takeoff of the first plane before four o'clock. Why do they have to line up? Because the runway is not is not lighted and it needs to be lighted. Hmm? They have to to, to provide lighting on both sides of the runway until the aircraft lifts off. <laughs>